Welcome back to another segment of Married to the Game. I'd give that a two. A two? A two. Out of three? Out of ten. You came in so hot, then you were like, uh, two. You really, really hit the... the ha, big Coast Mike's muted. <laughs> really, oh, hit, really hit the hard boy. Come. It was weird. Well, it went with the music. Mm. You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome for your pleasure. Which, if you're listening on YouTube, there's no music for copyright reasons. Uh, head over to the podcast for that. Um, and if you are on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. We're really trying to get to 1,000. So definitely do that for us. It would help us out gr- tremendously. We said we were going to get into some David Johnson here. Uh, we're realizing we're short on time on this free podcast, and we want to get to this buy, sell, hold segment that we have planned for you. So we're going to table the David Johnson yeah, discussion. We, we got a lot of uh, traction on the buy, sell, hold, and some people hit us up asking about certain people. So we wanted to make sure we got that into the free podcast. Right, and we'll go ahead and do the David Johnson talk on the Patreon show. So head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty for that. You can also get to it from our website, the FF Dynasty.com. As well as uh, we're going to answer all the listener questions. We're going to get into some Josh Gordon. We're going to talk about the Redskins wide receiver situation as well. So be looking out for that. Give us that $5 holla. For well, sure. Let's get into this buy, sell, hold. Yeah. Let's yeah. And it. also on the Patreon, we're going to hit you. We're going to go through the list of guys you didn't draft as starters, but all of a sudden you need to have them in your lineup. So the must start. The, didn't know you needed to. Right. The must-start bench players that just climbing their way up and earning a roster roster start. Well, let's start off the buy-sell holds with one of those guys, at least in my opinion right now, is Deshaun Jackson. I definitely want to give the Florida Corey on this one uh, first. So it could be Dynasty or Redraft. Just make sure you state both or one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How, like in, oh. in well dynasty or redraft we're yeah, okay all right all right this I'm was saying in djax in yes. redraft i don't think there's any way i'm, I'm sorry djax for in a split for a split second there i was already in the guys that were on your bench that have clawed their way in your starting no, lineup no. but we're in the buy, buy we're sell hold we're kind of week, deal here. week two buy sell hold not week two who's, these are submitted yes. by listeners here yes well what's so funny about that is because anybody anybody that i hate on and they do well. Casey throws it to me first. And well, I, just because I, I want to see your I answer love first. It. I, I love it. See this your is answer great. First. I mean, Deshaun Jackson has been that guy the last couple of years where it just I lo- I've loved it when somebody took him in a dynasty startup draft way ahead of when I would have, and I've loved seeing him basically in people's lineups as somebody who is going to be a dud for them, and I'm that gives me an advantage and. That is obviously Djax has been up and down, and you know a couple years back it was not an advantage when you were going against Djax. It took one play to make your day, but then mm-hmm. when he caught three of them, he was kicking the crap out of you. And here Fitz Magic has the first yeah. two weeks of the season. It right. last now he's on fire. The la- I think is it is it is it the first <laughs> two plays of both games? It was touchdowns to Djax. Didn't he start week one? Uh, yeah, like I'm, that? Not, I'm not sure if I, it was the first play of both games, but they're he's stroking it to, to Djax on the long ball right. The boys are barring each other's jewelry yeah you know like he's going <laughs> dj said wear my they're wardrobe sh- they're sharing clothes at this point yeah. he said like, try not to try to stay humble when you <laughs> dj was the first of the world dj was the first guy to come out publicly and say we can't go back to Jameis. gotta ride the hot hand why well why wouldn't dj say that obviously but so, so this is this is the reason though that i liked and stayed confident with deshaun jackson is because Jameis just missed him on a bunch of throws last year. He was open. He could have had these kind of big games last year. He was there. He was still getting open. He still has the juice. He's Fitzy's just getting him the ball. Well, that's what you were hearing about all last year is why aren't Djax and Jameis Winston on the same page? What's so wrong? Why are they missing each other? And then in the offseason, oh, they're working out together. They're making sure they're on the same page. And then Fitzy comes in and says, oh, watch this. Hold my beer. Here we go. So... <laughs> So buy, the, sell, hold, DJ. Let's see if Corey can answer your question for the first time I'm married to the game. History. Buy, uh, sell, or hold. You could go redraft and dynasty. Just state which one Either is which. Or, or if you feel the same way in both. Yeah, I mean, obviously in dynasty, it's it's sell or hold. You got to plug plug them in your lineup and enjoy. Um, or get something really good for him. Uh, because he's, you know, still in the. It's a. He hadn't slowed down one bit, but he's not a spring chicken. He's been around for a long time. I was just watching that football life, Michael Vick, the other day, and that I mean, like that. My, 
Djax was all over that. Yeah. that There's was, a good chance he helped you get to two and zero in both situations. Yeah, very, very, very good point. So for me in Dynasty, it's, it's either hold him and ride him out, and 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 you continue being a contender with him. If you, but obviously, if you're not a contender, see maximize your sell. Um, and a, another good week this week for the for the uh, Buccaneers because they play against the Steelers defense. So mm-hmm. you could maybe ride that third week in a row of s- some decent volume and you know big time catches. Maybe he doesn't catch another seventy five yarder, but you know that's not going to happen every week. But Djax is just as good as anybody to do it. Um, so yeah, in 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 redraft, I mean, th- there's no reason to sell him in right. redraft. You got to ride the lightning. There's no selling him in redraft unless obviously you package you know him up with somebody and go get somebody awesome that you could have never dreamed of being able to get with that combination two weeks ago um but yeah i mean I, I, there's no i don't think you buy d jackson dynasty right now i mean you've you've had a two-year window to buy this guy you don't go buying him now um but yeah i mean ride Jason, it out yeah well, i'll hold d jacks if where you got him for f- almost free in a startup or maybe even picked him up off of waivers in a short bench or something or, or in, a, in your rookie free agent draft, maybe you grabbed them in, in your FFPC leagues. I think you ride that lightning out as long as you can. I don't think they'll go back to Jameis when he comes back. I think as long as Fitzpatrick's slinging it, this is gonna they're going to fill it up again. Uh, and, and if, if, but I like what you said. If you're not a contender, maybe you go look to get something from right. Ajax and, right and now. And I think, I think maybe Dynasty. you figured it out in two weeks that you're not a contender, but most likely you, you probably, probably need a couple – another week or two to right. really solidify whether you're a contender or not. And it's great that he is going to uh, Pittsburgh this week, which we've seen just get dominated in the air. So you get another week to kind of bide time and see what's going on. Right. Uh, and with that, that situation. That, that's exactly right. I'll, and I, that's, I'm glad you brought it up like that. I'll make this quick. I'll talk about it more later, but if you're two and O, O and two, all that good stuff, you don't kid yourself. If you are the lucky two and O it don't go out and buy somebody like a DJX for overpriced and be all of a sudden you can be, you know, two and five because you just got lucky yeah. a couple of weeks. Understand the situation. Know the temperature of your roster. Are you a two and O that deserves to be two and O? Are you a lucky two and O? And that might be a, just a, another, um, you know, really good quick reason to join our Patreon because you can throw all your trade offers and, and all that stuff right past us. And we'll try to help you out with that. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, if you were going into the season thinking that you were, weren't going to be, very good and maybe you, you snuck a win or two and you could see maybe the train might be coming off the tracks a little bit i could see at this point seeing that ah oh, maybe i'm not quite a contender yet but for the most part you're still it's still early right you're still figuring it out somewhat and you know djx could be part of the reason why you're in the playoffs right um, so anyway let's go to another guy chris hogan had a dud of a first week where everybody fired him up and was excited about it probably benched him this week against jacksonville Got in the end zone two times. Two times. Um, we talk, I talked about this guy in uh, before the season started, and he's, he's great to have, and he, his stock got elevated through the offseason, and he was going earlier in startup drafts than previous years. But the thing is with Hogan is like nobody ever wants to give you anything for him. So if you get him, you're pretty much stuck with him, and let, or they're just giving you peanuts for him. Yeah, and and Chris see, Hogan is the Kyle Rudolph of wide receivers. Right, you can just <laughs> never. I love it. Never get what you should be able to that get. That is him. perfect, Jay Wayne. And this week, right now, he scores two touchdowns against Jacksonville. So you couldn't have a better like flex your muscles. See, I told you you wanted to buy Chris Hogan from me, and you should have taken all those trade offers I sent your way in the last three weeks or three months or whatever. Like Casey said, you can't get anything for Hogan ever, even when he's killing it midseason. Right, even when he's wide receiver five or right, four. Right, right, yeah. To start the league, start the year last year, he's like wide receiver five overall for five weeks, and then all of a sudden, People you still trying can't, to get get a anything, for him. can't get anything for him. He goes and gets two touchdowns against the Jags, and then they bring in Josh Gordon. And, it, you know, so now you got Josh Gordon coming in, um, and, you know, obviously they're going to get uh, their uh, slot guy back, Julian Edelman, in a, in a couple weeks. And so. So well when yes. they when they do get all those guys back though it seems to be a pretty formidable situation for them so I could see where you're going saying that maybe it's a negative but you could be going and you know Edelman Hogan Josh Gordon all of a sudden is a really hard Juju Smith Schuster like situation to to cover yeah no doubt I mean obviously you know the the things are gonna you got Gronk and Hogan and you got retread Philip Dorsett and you're trying to make James White well, your I think best once wide he comes receiver. In, once once that 
once those two guys get in the game, I right. think Dorsett's... When Josh Gordon comes in, he's going to open things up just because he's Josh Gordon. And then when you get Julian Edelman back, the thing the chains get movier, easier to move. Um, but for me, any t- if you could... If you can sell Hogan this week, I'm I'm selling him. But you just can't give him right. away. Exactly. Right. And I just don't know that you he's, can sell him. That's, it, if you could, I'd be down to. But if he can, he's got the Lions coming up this week. So well, there's I another saw, third third week matchup. Good look point. forward to where he does. Josh Gordon may or may not even play this week. Maybe they throw him out up, there as a I bet decoy. He suits up as, I bet he suits up decoy or not. I bet he suits up. Just give him a player too. And and get some targets. And Chris Hogan gets. The benefit of that and Detroit, they're not going to be able to stick Gronk. So yes, it probably great, might be without great, Slay. Great week with that. Great week coming up potentially for Chris Hogan again. Slay's yes, he's got a concussion. Slay, Slay got beat up bad. Um, and then, but then, and then you got another week without Julian Edelman. So right. you might have a couple of days, a couple of weeks here where you still get some more Chris Hogan before there. Uh, yes, there's going to be the more the merrier with the P- Patriots offense. But if you can, I sold him last week before week before week two fired off. And I'm I'll share that with my Patreon members. I'm not gonna share that publicly. Oh, I'm gonna tease that's a tease. The wall. I, I I but I I've been trying to trade him. I found a window. I found a package deal for him, and yeah. I'll go. Th- I'll break that down on Patreon. Well, it doesn't matter with Chris Hogan. Somebody's always gonna like. Even if it does end up helping him out with these other receivers, like and he maybe he does crush week three or whatever, people are going to be like, "Well, Edelman's coming back, and they exactly. just got Josh Gordon." Exactly. So there's always going to be a reason. Right. And nobody wants Chris Hogan, so and I'm probably that, riding him out. Right. I'm probably just going to ride him out, and then maybe somebody gets desperate. Well, at we've some been point. saying that's the same thing we've right. been saying all season exactly. long. Is you, you have to ride him out and enjoy. I'd love the to sell him for something decent. Put but. him in your lineup because he scores points with Tom Brady. But you know, you're only that. The thing about it is, is yes, you you can't get anything for him, so you all of them you got to ride it out. But then you're riding it out, and then he falls on his shoulder awkward. Yeah. He's out for four to six weeks. So even and this is dynasty, and he's not signed long term with the Patriots. He's basically in a contract year. So if you're yeah, looking at far ahead, 28, 29 already. 20, yeah, yes. one of those. And that whole that that stat that were you know it's a true stat. He's never had more than forty something catches in a year. It, it, and there's little windows where he's five, you know, wide receiver five overall yeah. to start the year last year before he gets hurt. Hogan is, and he's all those all those seasons were without, you know, it's not on the Patriots. Obviously, he didn't have f- more than forty catches last year because he missed more, half, more than half the season. But and then he comes back into playoffs and blows up and does what Chris Hogan does when Tom Brady's throwing him the ball. I'd love to sell, but it just doesn't seem like it'll be. He can't sell Kyle Rudolph. Good, Nobody enough, wants Kyle a Rudolph. A good enough deal to make me want to sell him. I yeah. mean, you know, right. maybe I'm loaded at receiver and I just, I, I, I don't even know if you can get a second for. <laughs> Right, Chris Hogan. Yeah, like, and I probably would want to just have right. that advantage. Well, I said in my if, if I was loaded at receiver, maybe right. maybe I take that. But I mean, again, I was. I think I don't think you're going to get market value for him. Right. All right, uh, Broncos running backs, Lindsey and Freeman. We'll go Lindsey first. Ah, buy sell hold dynasty, Lindsey. It's so circumstantial. Like all these questions. I mean, if you if you it is. if That's you just good. picked up. Lindsay and you you have a bunch of running backs, you know, and, and you can never not, have too many running backs. I know. And that would be <laughs> the next thing to say after <laughs> being like, I got a bunch of running backs so I can sell one. But I mean, let, let's say I got a league where if I picked up Lindsay, I, I have two different dynasties where in one league, if I picked up Lindsay, I'd, I'd, I want to start him immediately. In the other league, if I picked him up, he, he's probably not in my lineup just based on yeah. the squad that I have. So. If, if you don't need him, then you might as well take this. I know Big Code packaged up a trade and shipped him off last week because of this, this spike in value that he got, and I can't blame you for that. Um, and I can't blame you if you saw how awesome he looks and, and you want to hold. Um, I, I don't know if you can go buy him. I guess you could probably buy him. He's probably not too, too expensive yet. I, I'd well, be down to... Buy, sell, or hold this guy. <laughs> like, yeah, like you said, everything, all of this is circumstantial, and we try to gloss over that and, and try to figure out a way to, to tell you which way to go. Um, you know, for the Lindsay thing, maybe the first undraft, I think first rookie, undrafted rookie ever to have 200 yard games back to back to start his career. Just, you know, and, it, and 100 yards rushing on minimal carries. All purpose yards. He didn't have 100 yards rushing week one. Okay. All right. Fair right. enough. It was all purpose yards. Okay. All right. But you know, just and it was for the Broncos. Right. So the the only running back to start their career with the Broncos and with two hundred all purpose yards. The games. reason I would you, the reason I would sell is because he's got he came in and he just it was the Royce Freeman factor of the Broncos. Everybody just was loving Royce Freeman and Royce Freeman was about to be he. We had a late rookie draft and he was one two. He got picked mm-hmm. second overall right after a Barkley. You know, in the rookie draft, so you got uh, just Royce Freeman was the, th- and obviously he's the second part of this question, but Royce Freeman was the shit. 
Okay, yeah. and now so Lindsay comes in and steals the thunder, and Royce Freeman, you know, doesn't do hardly anything. They, they get the exact same rushing yards in week, week one, one, and Roy, and and Lindsay breaks a nice little pass down the sideline for a touchdown. So I did package him up and and sell him sell him high because that was an, like obviously that was after the first game of his entire career, and it could it could go up or down from there, and who knows? You'd have to have a crystal ball, but that was you know that was on a team where I had plenty of running backs. And for me, that was on a team where I felt like I had a need in other options in other areas, and it was maybe kind of a perfect storm to sell a guy who's just played one game ever. You don't mm-hmm. usually do that, but you know, well, everyone needs an RB two, right? Which is why there's a market for Lindsey right now, and there is a market. People love the hot, the hot hand, the hotness, and, the, and what's going on, the flavor of the week, and they hate Royce Freeman. Well, well, yeah. I don't right, think so everybody hates Royce Freeman. I think right now the people who didn't like Royce Freeman are reveling in it, and the exactly. people who loved Royce Freeman are like a little bummed. Regretting right now. what right. they paid for him if they paid for him, if they bought him later when right. the stock was up. So that that was kind of my part. There was the Royce Freeman. Part. That's why I sold Lindsay at what I call was high. Maybe it won't be high later, but maybe it'll be, you know, super high. Maybe he goes a little up because Royce Freeman is. I still think he's a thing, and I think he's good, and he can catch even though he's not getting any targets, and he can sure. break runs even though he's not doing it right now. I, so I think I, that I think it's much easier for me to go say go buy Royce Freeman. Oh, like, that that's was something for sure what I was saying when we got to Royce Freeman was right. I'm buying all the Royce Freeman if you want to sell him. Absolutely, I, I like that. I can't say that about Lindsey just because he's so hot right now. It's it's harder to tell you what to do with Lindsey. It's more about what what's going on with your team and does he make sense for your team or does he make sense to, to sell for something else? Well, because just I think you can kind of do anything come, with Lindsey right now. Well, Freeman, you can't sell him. Don't sell Freeman right now. Good call. Go buy him. Good call. Hold him. And, or buy him. And, and coming out of nowhere, all of a sudden, Lindsey's getting you a first-round pick in some instances. I mean, if, if Lindsey can get me a first-round pick, I will sell Lindsey all day long. Yeah. He gone. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, but I'm, 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 I wouldn't mind having both of these guys. If I could get the Broncos' backfield, I feel decent about it, and I'll just I'll ride Lindsey until he doesn't seem like he's the hot hand anymore, and then maybe these r- roles switch in November. Uh, you know, Correct. To, to see what happens, and maybe Lindsey... Obviously, injuries can happen, but Lindsey's not the biggest guy. I don't hate that at all. Like I don't. Dude, I'm not, runs I'm not, tough. I'm not a sizeist. You're right. Or yeah, a no, weightist. you're not. You're not. If you can play, you can play. He looks shot out of a cannon. He it's looks awesome. He looks slippery. lightning quick. Yeah. He doesn't lose any speed when he makes his moves. I like what he's doing, and he runs tough enough to run. You know, through the between tackles. the tackles. I don't know how long that's sustainable for. And like you said, Royce Freeman can definitely catch. But if he seems to be the preferred third down guy right now in the pass catcher, Lindsey, that is in yeah. this offense. Um, so I don't mind having trying to get both of these guys and having a piece of this Broncos offense. I think they got good weapons. They got a serviceable enough quarterback, a, a pretty good line, and a good defense, which shapes up well for the running backs. On an offensive coordinator who we've talked about on the Patreon show multiple times, who doesn't mind running the ball. I agree with all that. I, Lan, Lindsay does look shot out of a cannon. And he but does. if you get a first, give me the first for Lindsay and got to. I'm out of here. Absolutely. All right. So we all agree that we're buying Royce. I would. Jay Wayne already you're in yeah yeah you're buying the top of that for sure I like that I think there's nothing like he got a he got some goal line work this week he's had faced some stack boxes and looks looked good against it he runs tough you can call him a plotter if you want to call him a plotter I think he's faster than people think he is definitely uh, this is a nice contrast to each other these two backs um I I think Royce Freeman will be just fine uh just be a step right now Lindsay's hot and Lindsay's playing well so you know feed the guy who's playing well yeah and well that's the thing you got it that's that's why i sold Lindsay because royce freeman's a thing and that's why you got to know if you even if you're going out to buy you'd be buying royce freeman lower to date and you had to buy him two weeks ago no doubt about it but you Lindsay, barring injury on either one of these two cats know they're both going to be splitting work because they're both good Lindsay's yeah. really good i like what well, everything what you just said about Lindsay is completely true so you got to know even going forward like royce freeman is not going to give you that top end performance like you thought you would because Lindsay's here to stay too. Right, right. Bar an injury, Lindsay's going to be on that field splitting it up with him. Yeah, for sure. I think absolutely. Uh, let's move on to Lamar Miller. Interesting question here. Buy, sell, hold. Lamar Miller. Who wants it first? I wouldn't try. I mean, I, I like just you. I, I think one of the things that you just said just a second ago was so perfect. Everybody needs an R. Almost, almost everybody needs an RB two. Mm-hmm. There's a market for Lindsay. So there's a market for Lamar Miller. There's a there, Lamar Miller has a market. It's been I'm a little, buying this market. Though. Why? Why wouldn't you? I mean, you can't. You, I doubt you get anything to sell him because he's really not come out the hottest, you know. And but there's the, the Texans altogether hasn't haven't come right. out hot, 
you know, and I just feel like Lamar Miller has a, he can really go only go up from here. He's only averaging nine points a game and he's got 10 and a half and 11 and 12. And so he hasn't killed you. hasn't really cost you the week. Mm -hmm. Hasn't won you the week yet. And the Houston Texans has stumbled out of the gate. They right. got they got Will Fuller back last week to stretch things out. You saw Will Fuller and DeAndre Hopkins really start to open it up last week, and you know I think the, uh, the Lamar Miller can, it can, it can only get any better. It can only get better. I've, obviously, I guess he could stay the same and get you twelve points every week, and that's not going to kill you. You're looking for at RB two most weeks. Sure, you, know? you just want to get that ten twelve to well, this Houston, keep you afloat. This Houston team's struggling. The the Tennessee played them well. Their defense is better than I was going to give them credit for. And Vrabel's not too far it. removed from being over there. Right. Let's not forget that. And this offensive line is terrible. I mentioned Good earlier point. on this show they're ranked second to last per PFF through two weeks. Deshaun has no time in the pocket. He looks a little stationary for what we've seen out of him last year. He's still, you know, not too far removed from that ACL tear. It's it's only going to improve as the year gets better. And I think Lamar's looked great. He's averaged five yards a carry. Yeah. So he's getting work. He had 14 attempts this past week, 20 attempts the week before that. Only getting a, a he's only had three receptions through two games, which is a little alarming. I would I'd think like that number would go that. up a little bit as this offense. Starts right. moving the ball a little better. Right. They're really stalling out. That's what I'm saying. I think when they start to get going, if they start clicking, even if it's not back to where they were that couple game stretch with Deshaun last year, I think, you know, the offensive line has been terrible. And if they get start get clicking a little bit, he's like, as bad as they've been with a bad offensive line and just kind of chugging along, he's still got you 12 PPR points. Sure. So I, I'm I'm down to, to try to, to buy low on some Lamar Miller. Room full of buys. Why wouldn't you? You can't really – not going to get much for him if you sell him, I guess. So buy, 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 buy. Um, <laughs> this is in sync over here. Well, Backstreet Boys just put out a new song, so <laughs> got to keep it in sync relevant. Uh, Chris Thompson. Another guy who's been just carrying you through the first two weeks. This week, he gets a little bit more garbage time production out of him. Uh, Redskins offense didn't look quite as confident this week. Maybe a credit to that Colts defense. Yeah, I, I owe the Colts defense an apology. <laughs> Last week, I said they're they're one of the worst. Not not they're not very good defense. Maybe not the worst, but close. And then they they came out, and I thought they played the Redskins good. very well. That that rookie linebacker is playing out of his mind. Sheared. South Carolina State. Uh, Sheard is is balling on the defensive line. Um, they they put all kind of pressure on the Redskins. Anyway, um, I knew when they picked up Sheard, it was going to be a good move. They got him for hardly nothing, and he's a he was a mainstay on my defensive line backup in Madden. Got <laughs> solid Madden ratings. I knew Sheard was going to be good for him. The uh, that rookie forced a fumble there at the end of that game, and got the Colts the ball back. They scored. It really put that game out of reach, and then it was just the defense was backing off. And then on that last couple drives, Chris Thompson just, like, doubled his PPR pr production just with a ton of dump downs. Yeah. Um, but he was taking some shots. He's he's getting a lot of work, getting tackled a Darius bunch. Darius Leonard would be the rookie from South Carolina right. State that you were referring to. Right. Um, I would, in redraft, hold, in dynasty, sell Chris Thompson. In redraft, maybe even buy, if you could, just because Ooh. who cares if he blows his knee out or something later on? You just it's, you're trying to find lightning in a bottle for a season, and not that you're not trying to do that in dynasty and win a championship, because obviously I'm, I'm all about you know maximizing quality over quantity and all that stuff. And the passing targets from Alex Smith is about as quality as it gets to produce PPR points for your RB two, and he you know at this point how is how is Chris Thompson not in your lineup every week. I came on here last week and said he was my biggest miss going into the first week on just value and where I, I you know, just couldn't draft him. He he kind of played us on the whole I, my knee's not going to be right till November thing, and I kind of latched onto that. It's like a you know personal confidence thing. If you don't have the confidence, how in the world are you going to be playing NFL football? Yeah, I don't know why you told us all that. What, you know, I, like why, why did he tell us? What that? upside is for him to come out and sandbag us like that? Why gotcha. would he do that? Just to set the defense up, I guess. Yeah. Oh, this guy doesn't have any faith in himself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we so don't the need to tackle him. Sandbagging the defense, and yeah. he got us on the on the fantasy side of things. Um, I mean, in a dynasty league. If you can sell high on Chris Thompson, I guess great. But why, why in the world would you sell right now? You're not gonna. You're, you're still probably not gonna get very much. And how in the world? I don't see. See, I think you could get something decent for Chris Thompson. In I the guess Dynasty try the world tr right now. You could see check the waters. Maybe you could send out a trade that you would have no reason to but love it if somebody hit accept. But I, 
you know, I, again, it's hard. Uh, Alex, it's like almost a little perfect storm here for Chris Thompson's checkdowns with Alex Smith not having to what he wanted to have after the out of the wide receiver so far. Something's not right there to where it's just funneling to checkdowns to Chris Thompson. I don't see how you move that many points out of your lineup without getting a, a just a ridiculous return. You know, like somebody, again, it would be some type of trade where never in your right mind would you have thought you'd have got that for Chris Thompson two weeks ago. It would take that type of trade for me to do away with those types of startability. Look at, look, how hard is it to find a running back? I mean, yeah, there's more of them now than there were a couple of years ago, but still, it's still hard to find well, running backs. Well, there's more, you, but people are clinging on to them harder than they ever have right. before. Yeah, good luck trying to trade for a running back. So, so I think I, you I just, could get a lot for him. I think a lot of people like Chris Thompson, right. and they see these big points, and again, he's back at it. Well, that's a good point because nobody else wants to trade a running back anyway. So if you are the one guy in the market selling somebody who's putting up points, maybe you get a, but maybe you do get that King's Ransom. He, he's just so small and brittle. He's dealt with so many Never injuries. Never the season. And he's getting so much work that I, I hate to come on here and predict injuries. I just I feel like I should sell high right now before anything goes bad, and then his value is just right back to where it was when he broke his leg last year. Well, I can't blame you there because I'm always – you know, the guy talking about trying to sell super high and I've always, you know, I've been raining on Chris Thompson's pro we, we, we hammered it home in the off season, long-term dynasty hold and Chris Thompson don't go together. And I just, it's just, it's hard to move those points out of your lineup right now. But yes, Jay Wayne, you're right. He, you, we never, ever want to look for injuries. We all, you know, all that good stuff. You never want to look for him. You never, you're definitely not going to predict him. but he's been basically hurt every single year, even in college and with this extra work, you never know. So if, if you if you can get that high return, I can't blame you. But I can understand if you even if you want to sell him, but you're like, man, I just want to keep winning. Chris Thompson's helping you win for sure, hundred percent. All right, two more guys. Seahawks here. Jimmy Graham on the first one. Jimmy Graham's Jimmy. a Packer. Jimmy. Jimmy Graham's Sorry. a Packer. Yeah, you are right. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He was a Seahawk. I saw I saw Jimmy Graham and Tyler Lockett next to each other. And yeah. So Jimmy Graham Packers. Good week. I lost a five dollar bet to you, you did. about ASJ outscoring Jimmy for the week. Um, so yes, Jimmy did come up. I, I, honestly, the whole Packers offense played better against the Vikings than I thought. Yeah, I mean, I, it's not that I didn't think they couldn't do it. It's just that I didn't really expect a Rodge to go out there and look as good as he did. Um, I'm set. I would sell Jimmy Graham, but it get, just kind of like what we said about the running back position with Chris Thomas. Chris Thompson is super hard to find more than. Yeah, you know, super hard to find a tight end that's actually scoring points. But Jimmy Graham's older. To me, I would I would love an opportunity to get some good dynasty sell high on Jimmy Graham. I mean, I did I sold both of my I got a first round pick for him in the off season in one league, and uh, I believe I got Robert Woods for him in another league. Um, I don't know. I got so many trades going down. I can't keep them straight. But I did I sold Jimmy Graham twice and and was happy about he it. He is coming off of a great week. He, he is an older dude. He's a shell of his former self. He's dealt with a ton of different injuries that, that sap your explosiveness, and we've seen that. He's really just productive in the red zone and, and scoring you touchdowns. Aaron Rodgers, there's, he's, he he's not sure week, if his though. knee's getting better or worse, but that's, that's kind of my point, right? He looked good this week. He still has his name cachet. Aaron Rodgers is still playing games. I'd probably try and ring the register here and get rid of Jimmy Graham. You know, in a, in a decent matchup, I mean, everybody's a decent matchup for the Packers offense anyway, especially coming off the Vikings and looking, you know, flexing against the Vikings. Um, Jimmy Graham still hadn't had that two touchdown game yet. Mm -hmm. and, and so if for me, I might just hold him and play the roulette on the injury bug, hold him until he gets that two or three touchdown. Jimmy Graham, oh my God, Pat, you know, Aaron Rodgers tight end. I'm not saying that I'm worried about him getting hurt based on what his previous injuries are. I'm just saying that those injuries have sapped what no Jimmy Graham used to be but people don't I don't think they realize that because out there when I'm talking to guys at work or whatever about Jimmy Graham they they still have him on a Jimmy Graham pedestal but from the Saints days you know sure sure and I was super going it coming into last year I was super super high on Jimmy Graham because he had come back from the injury the year before and didn't practice Casey remembers this I was preaching Jimmy Graham to Casey last year because he didn't practice at all two years ago in between games because he was coming back from that devastating knee injury and he played super, super well. And I was like, well, now he'll be another year. He get an off season to not be rehabbing an injury and he's going to come out there and look nice and spry. I think it was Achilles. Um, 
was it? I think it was. A, I thought it was I don't a knee. remember. He's and had a knee, but too, he had that bad knee injury that you don't come back from. And he came back from that anyway. And so yes, I, I I was super high on him coming into last year. Came out and obviously caught all those touchdowns from Russell Wilson. But outside of that, to he just, see him have six for ninety five and no touchdowns here and have have a nice good good day for you is is nice to see. You get a little less mobile Aaron Rodgers and a little more in the pocket trying to get the ball out. Jimmy Graham could be his friend and it could be a nice season yeah. season long uh, relationship between those two. Uh, this is the reason why I took the bet against you because there's just not that many guys with the upside of Jimmy Graham even at a you know maybe half of what Jimmy Graham used to be. He's still better than half the tight ends and he's in a great offense. So yeah. no, I like I'll that. roll the dice. I don't I don't mind selling like you were saying you know cashing out Obviously, you just would have to be deep into tight ends to all, do it. It's all situational, or or not. Just ringing the register I mean, for the tight end a, and playing a backup that you might have taken off the waiver wire or you have on your team. Like that's a good. Well, the the you and I actually, I said, I said uh, Robert Woods, but it was we we got Marvin Jones plus a draft pick for Jimmy Graham. I remembered it. But when we went down, Jimmy Graham was our quote unquote best tight end. But that was it. We were we were taking advantage of the A Rod. He had just signed with the Packers. We moved him, got Marvin Jones and a draft pick, and we went down to ASJ and Jared Cook mm-hmm. and on our roster. Right. So it's not like we had a better option than Jimmy Graham to sell. So you're right. You and we, he's, he's one week removed from two for eight. So right for sure. Absolutely. Just the tight end position, which Rogers, is why I right, don't mind exactly, selling. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. That's why you know I don't mind moving down to ASJ and those guys because there's right. going to be weeks where they do exactly what Jimmy Graham just did. But Jimmy right. Graham obviously has the A Rodge and the Jimmy Graham ceiling Cache. over those guys. That's going to at the end of the season probably put them a little bit higher than those guys points wise. Well, when when he signed with the Packers, I was able to move him for a first round pick. If you if you can take Jimmy Graham right now and move him for a first round pick, would you do it? Absolutely. <laughs> and all day. I guess it really it depends if again it's all situational. If I if I got a good squad and I think I'm I've been beating people up and I got a good team, Jimmy Graham's gonna be part of that. I don't mind leaving leaving I, Jimmy Graham around. I know that's a pretty cliche answer, that, but I get um, it. I but, understand. It's hard to trade away points, man. This is this game is so much fun because you don't know what's gonna happen. Right. We sit we can sit up here and talk all this mess and the guy you don't know. Well, I said it last week. You're going to have a guys that didn't score points in week one score points in week two, and vice versa. And the only thing that's not flipping around right now is Michael Thomas. Right. You know what I mean? The only the Tyree only kill. the only people that you know are for sure going to score points every single week is Michael freaking Thomas. All right, let's go Tyler Lockett and finish the show up today. I would absolutely move Jimmy Graham for a first. Just want to state that one more time. Tyler Lockett buying, selling, or holding had a coming off a good week. Had an awesome touchdown catch on a dime from Russell Wilson. Maybe. Look to be taking the, the lead reins in that wide receiver core after the week one. Brandon Marshall looked to be kind of like yeah. the lead dude. Uh, Tyler Lockett was a little bit more involved in week two. He looked good out there. He looked fast. I, I think. I think I'm. Pro- I don't think you can get really what he's worth right now. So I'd, I'd be holding. Yeah, I think I'm holding and letting the uh, legend grow. Yeah, of, still a little of, early of uh, <laughs> the Lockett. Legend grow. We, I, I said this in the off season about drafting Tyler Lockett is that there was so many people that loved Tyler Lockett and were huge into the fan club of him being the next AB even. Some people were putting him on that pedestal of being that kind of guy when Matt Harmon, the reception perception, all that stuff was in its peak. Um, That was what was, you know, he was being compared to. So I don't think it takes long for the folk hero type stuff to come back up, especially with no Baldwin, with no No defense, no deep. Well, actually I was, pretty surprised on how well the defense played for most of that Bears game until they were finally just broken because they their offense was so bad. Right. Well, that's um, a good point. I mean, if you get KJ Wright and Bobby Wagner, you got two of the best defense. Yeah, and that's what was surprising is that they were out and they right. were still playing that's pretty what, decent defense. That's a good point. When you um, get those guys in there, they're going to still have a deep, but they just, the Legion of Boom is gone. Right. So. But the problem is, is Lockett has made his living off some big, bigger plays right now. And unless... Russell Wilson can ad lib and get away like he normally does, but right now the line's been so bad that it's hard for him to get there. But he has been getting the chance to do that for locking that last throw to lock it in that in this game for that touchdown was a dime. It was, and Lockett will get open, and I, 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 you just need a couple more games like this. Lockett can have some down games. I don't think it'll hurt his overall folklore legend. So I'm holding in anticipation of selling, but I'm going to continue to just. I have him catch a couple more bombs and have his look at how fast he is, and maybe his name gets in a couple more people's mouths. Sure. Well, I think with the lack of the offensive line and the lack of the consistent running game and the lack of the 
uh, it, if, if nothing else, the pass defense, which, you know, Wagner is going to help you in every facet of the game when he gets back in there, Bobby Wagner, that is. But I, I agree with Jay Wayne. You're not going to get really what he's worth and because it went so far down after the knee injury. Um, but I, I agree with what Casey's saying, too. It, I mean, Tyler Lockett was one of my favorite wide receivers coming out because why not? He was freaking awesome to watch, and he was fun. And you're, see, you're starting to see that again. And with, you know, 14.9 points week one and 17 points week two, you know, they don't really have a whole lot of other options. And Tyler Lockett is just one of those guys where he's, you know, obviously he's been hurt, so you can't. it's hard to compare him to like a T.Y. Hilton or somebody like that. But he's so fast if he can get back to that spot – even though they don't have really anybody else for the defense to look at, he's not one of those guys that, you know, you can take away yeah. because he, you, I mean, you're, he's just too fast. So, yeah. and I mean, he's not, you know, got Chris Harris from the slot, not Tyreek Hill fast his first touchdown of the year, but you know, so. he, he's not Tyreek Hill fast, but he's fast. He's just one of those types of receivers where somebody's not like, oh, all right, well, we're shadowing him. Patrick Peterson's not going to follow him all over the place. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that's just not how you play Tyler Lockett. You just hope you don't get beat deep. And so far, teams have been getting, like you said, that Russell Wilson doesn't get enough credit for his accuracy. He gets a super a lot. He gets a lot of credit for a lot of things, but that was a dime to Tyler Lockett. And I, I, I agree. There with, will be more of those. And I, I agree just with think both of y'all. Help, help the, the I legend. I think you grow. hold and let it keep going because yeah. unless he's unless he's the guy that kicks it over a a, a big package deal that is just you know a a win. If you're, you know, if you're packaging up four guys for two guys or three for one or something like that, if he's the ta- the scale tipper for you to bring in, you know, a, a big top top dog that you, you know, the trade doesn't get done without Tyler Lockett, I can I can see it. All right, well, that's going to conclude the buy sell hold portion of this show by popular demand. I think that's going to wrap us up for the evening. Jay Wayne, you want to uh, take us out of here? Yeah, if you're listening to the show on YouTube or or the podcast, please go on to YouTube and hit subscribe. We're in the home stretch of getting to a thousand subscribers, so greatly be appreciated if you can go and do that. We're on any of your platforms of choice: Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, iTunes. Please go on to iTunes, give us a five star review if you haven't done that. It just takes a second, and you don't even have to write anything. Just tap the little five stars. Be sure to hit out our hit hit up our website, theffdynasty.com. Uh, we've got some forums on there. You can get your uh, questions in on there. If you're not ready to take the $5 holler plunge and commitment and buy us a coffee to uh, head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty, where we've got um, over eight hours of content on there that's exclusive to Patreon. You can't get anywhere else. We're also answering any questions that come through there. We're doing a live stream on Sundays. Um, just another reason to be on YouTube. But if, if you're on Patreon, you get priority on, on your questions for your sit start and, uh, and we're just we're, we're constantly answering people's questions in there. I think we're up to like almost a hundred comments and, and posts and replies and stuff in there. So people are definitely getting their money's worth over there. We're about to go jump in and talk about a slew of different things. Josh Gordon, David Johnson, the Redskins. I'm um, sure Big Co has some trade he wants to discuss. Your mom <laughs> for a while. Um, but that'll uh, do it for today's show. Thanks for listening, everyone. Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties, Married to the Game.